yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not really feeling to take this free kick anymore. Yeah, but the thing is, I don't want to take it either. So I already said I don't want to. Bro, I ain't taking shit. <laughs> Insert relevant time of day here. And welcome back to yet another installment of Football This Week, the series where I bring you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the course of a week online. Now, we all knew it was coming. It had to happen at some point. It's back by literally whatever the opposite of popular demand is. It's the international break. Oh my God, it's like so boring. Now, obviously, as per usual, England played two games during this international break. One of which we lost against the Czech Republic. But I think it's fair to say it wasn't that one that made all the headlines. The second game was up against Bulgaria. And going into it, there was a lot of suspicion that there'd be a lot of racist chanting from the home Bulgarian fans. I'd probably argue some of the stickers around the stadium were somewhat of a light giveaway as to what was going to happen next. Yeah, no, mate, I was just doing a cross on my hand slip, basically. In the end, England absolutely battered Bulgaria. 6-0 was the final score. You can really tell why these guys are joint bottom of the group. But that kind of pales into insignificance in the end because as suspected the black players in the England team were subjected to racial abuse from the Bulgaria fans. UEFA were testing a new three-step policy in regards to racial abuse as well in this game. The first time anything's noted, the referee just makes a note of it. The second time it's reported to the referee, the game is then halted just whilst they can control the crowd and then put an announcement out across the stadium. We did get to the second strike. The game was halted I think just before half of time. I mean, what are you gaining out of this situation? Your team's 4-0 down. You've been absolutely peppered. Clearly, what you're doing isn't affecting the players out on the pitch. They got bored at half time and ended up leaving. I guess that's an advertisement. Don't be racist, kids. It's so boring, you can't maintain it for more than 45 minutes. If I'm being serious, though, like, this hurt a lot to watch. <laughs> It just seemed like one of the worst instances of this in quite some time. Maybe it's because of the fact the protocol was in place and it was already expected before the game happened. But some of the scenes that were getting picked up on the TV were absolutely... Just, it's incredible to even see it. Like, I don't, I can't fathom that this is still happening in big old 2019. But like a man who's lost the ability to use his gentleman's area, the Bulgarian manager couldn't give a f I have to say, I really have no idea about this. Uh, if uh, our captain spoke to the fans, uh, then it's probably because the fans were unhappy with the way the team was performing. Or alternatively, it could be because they were being racist. I just want to put that one out there. Bulgaria's goalkeeper came out in an interview and said that everyone overreacted. The Bulgarian fans weren't even the ones doing it. You know what? Fair enough. He's got us on that one. He's probably just pointing at his mate on the other side of the stadium. We got to give him the benefit of the doubt here. One person person I can give praise to was the Bulgarian captain Evelyn Popov. He actually condemned the actions of the minority of Bulgarian fans and said, you know, how are we expecting players to come over here, want to play? Makes me laugh because one of their most prominent players is Wanderson, who's an import from Brazil. He wasn't even born in Bulgaria. To be honest, I was half expecting this celebration if Tyrone Mings, Marcus Rashford or Raheem Sterling actually scored in this game. If uh, speaking of Sterling, his tweet after Afterwards was was pretty brilliant, but did the protocol work? In my opinion, to an extent, yes. Obviously, you know, the fans left at halftime. The, the second half was a lot better. The problem is, from now, it's down to the consequences that the Bulgarian FA face. Because the protocol itself is a brilliant idea, but often we see cases like this where a team is just fine. 10k. Made to play behind closed doors. It does nothing. A harsh penalty is needed, even if it's removing the team from these qualifiers. Banning them from Euro 2020. I mean, they're not going to qualify anyway. But if you set that as a precedent, then trust me, this sort of thing won't happen again. Yo, I'm about to pick this ball up so hard. What are you talking about? You you can't pick up the ball, man. Yeah, but I'm the goalkeeper, but so... You're outside of your area. You're playing international football. Are you actually... You've actually picked up the ball. Oh, my God. Ukraine became one of the first countries to qualify for Euro 2020 with a 2-1 win over Portugal. Amos! Yeah! 
reckon Zinchenko might be pretty happy about it, to be honest with you. Just, just a sneaky suspicion. In the same game, Cristiano Ronaldo scored his 700th goal in professional football from the penalty spot. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough for his side to get anything from the game. He's now 67 goals away from the amount that Pele said he scored. So in reality, he's probably now outscored the Brazilian by 500. He's managed to choose the week where Lionel Messi will get the golden boot or golden shoe or whatever type of footwear it is. Having said that, Lionel Messi's never scored a goal in a Euro qualifier. So, I mean, who's the real fraud here? To be fair, it's a new target now for Cristiano Jr. to hit. Son, I've scored 700 goals now, all right? If you haven't done that by the end of this week, I'm taking your packed lunches away. I'm literally nine years old. What are you even? Elsewhere, Andorra won for the first time in like 50 plus competitive matches this week. The last time they won a Euro qualifier, I think I was one. That's mental. Like, it's amazing. They're like 139th in the world. Their population is only 77,000. That's all well and good. It's really heartwarming. But at some point, you would just give up in it. You just throw the towel in. After like the first 17 years of this winless record, you're probably like, lads, we've had a good innings, but it's probably time to pack it all in. North Korea played South Korea. I, mean, I, I guess that's somewhat of a derby, really. It's probably an understatement. It ended up being nil-nil. I was expecting it to be a lot more explosive than that. In a different sense as well, actually, thinking about it. C'est du n'importe quoi. <laughs> This is what I always expect the quality of the Scottish League to be. This video of Ronaldinho preparing for a game back at AC Milan has gone viral this week. I don't know why it looks like he's deciding what he wants from a chicken shot, but we move. Ahead of Liverpool's game against Manchester United in the Premier League, Danny Mills chose his combined starting eleven, which was exclusively Liverpool players. I think they call it depression. Not a single Manchester United player got into the... For goodness sake, lads. In fairness, I know pigeons that are better at deciphering football in quality than Danny Mills, so just in case it couldn't get any worse for United, their goal of the month competition has happened. It was won by Marcus Rashford, and it was a penalty because it was the only goal they scored this month. Just, just why would you even have it? Just cancelled the competition, fam. We're getting now to a point where United are actually arriving at prime banter era. Like, I'm talking Paul Con Chesky playing at left back for Liverpool. We're arriving there. Ex-Chelsea and Arsenal goalkeeper Petr Cech has decided to take up ice hockey. No, no, I, I can't really provide much context to that story either. Not only that, on his debut, he made two penalty saves in a shootout and was given man of the match. He couldn't save a penalty to save his life in football. How's he managed to do it in ice hockey already? We've got a t-shirt here made by rugby fans uh, proving why it's a better sport than football. I'd rather have transfer windows than everyone pissing on each other in rugby society in uni. <laughs> But now it is time for Still Nil Nil, the Sunday League segment of this series. You all know the drill by now. This week, we have got something quite sublime. I don't think I've ever actually seen this in my entire life. So a free kick is pumped long by the team in red, and it's met with the meatiest of meaty headers from a man in his own heart. Oh my god. How has this been allowed to occur? A man has just scored a header from his literally his own half. Also, is the goalkeeper actually okay? He looks like he's been distracted thinking about his next Tesco weekly shop halfway through that. Oh my god. I'll tell you what, if that wasn't bad enough, let's have a little bonus round as well. So the ball's bouncing around, the attacking side flicking over the keeper, and number 16 misses an open net by trying to do. Does he just try to do a Paolo Di Canio? <laughs> I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. Tottenham's under 21s managed to beat Colchester in a penalty shootout, bearing in mind that Tottenham's actual team couldn't beat Colchester in the League Cup, but their under 21s can. That's <clears throat> a little bit. <laughs> Oosh. 
Kilmarnock's ground staff in Scotland are trying to tend to the pitch using a vacuum cleaner. Feel like this man may not be the best candidate for the job. And finally, a man in Serbia has been offered the job at his local football team based on a CV which provided accomplishments on football manager. That is amazing. This man is so good at a football manager video game that an actual football team in real life have offered him a job. Congrats to Andre Pavlovic. You are now the manager of FK Bijan. I don't, I'm not even going to pronounce that. I mean, but that is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, slap a like on the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It's at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. Thank you.